You can keep your gun right there on the dresser. It's fine. Um, I don't have a gun. You forgot it at home? I want to take a picture with it. What? No, no. Like, I don't have one at all. I don't own a gun at all whatsoever. You don't own a... Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Wait, so what do you do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a trader. I teach people how to make money trading. I'm actually doing a, um, a webinar on Thursday, you know, on Thursday, October 24th, telling people to trade. That's not street at all. You sound extremely predictable and boring. So you don't plan on putting a pole to my poom poom when no. I know. So you're not gonna choke me up and beat on me when I when I get disrespectful? So you're not gonna pop out when I'm at the club with my girls and drag me out and embarrass me? Are you that plain? Why would you want me to do that? You know what? The men that get it, get it. I should have known when you didn't have no other baby mother. So that means that no other girl what? even wants you. You can't even put me in a car and go over 100 miles per hour. But you could lose your life that way. That's the exciting part. Okay, you know what? Just get out. Because you, you, you're you not him. What? That type of man that she was describing in the comedy skit is the complete opposite of what the young man was on Kendra G show. I want the chat to let me know what this brother said wrong. Because they cooked him in the comments. But watch this guy. He was. This was the interview that made me kind of give up hope for black men trying to look for black women in the black community in mass because the comments i honestly don't know what else to say good evening kendra how you doing uh, what's your name? Uh, my name's Hollis. Uh, Gojo is a uh, Hollis H O L L I S. Gojo is a, um, a Japanese animation character. Okay. So he's in the anime. Put him in a cuff. Put him in a cuff. Put him in. A, put him in. A, put him in a cuff. Hollis, where you calling me from, love? I'm calling from uh, Clarksville, Tennessee, about 45 minutes north of uh, Nashville. Okay, I'm put Tennessee. Okay, so the cost of living in Clarksville uh, outside of Nashville, Tennessee is not that high. So that's, you know, your money can stretch very far in that particular area of Tennessee. Here we go. How old are you? I'm 41. Okay, 41. What you do for a living? I'm a system administrator. I work in IT. Systems administrator? Yes. All right. You have any kids? No children. No, ch no children. No children. IT, no children. No kids. Um, Hollis, Tennessee, 41 systems administrator, no kids. Um, oh, God. What's your zodiac sign? Oh, Pisces. Pisces. Have you ever been married? Uh, yes, I have been married once. When did you get divorced? I got divorced in March of this year. Oh, you just got divorced this year. How many? Yeah. So if, if you've been in the military, his situation that he's about to explain about his marriage is very common. And I'm glad that he explained it as well as he did. And I don't think Kendra was prepared for that. But yeah, this is very common. Listen. How years were you married for? I was only married for three years. Okay. Why'd yeah. I get divorced? Be nosy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's no problem. Uh, basically, uh, I made an impulsive decision during uh, COVID in 2020. I was dating a woman kind of or in another state. And I was in the military at the time. And um, I wanted to date her like seriously, uh, but I had a lot of restrictions because it was COVID and I was in the military. So um, I asked her to move down to Tennessee with me just so I could date her. And she said that uh, she didn't want to come down to be someone's girlfriend. So me with a scarcity mindset. Did you hear that? How many times have I talked about scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset? The easiest way to deal with the combative woman is not to deal with her at all. You start a relationship and you're dating this woman and she is not your cup of tea. You know what you're supposed to do? Leave. But a lot of men don't do that because you live in a scarcity mindset, meaning that you don't think that you're going to get another woman if you leave this one. So you deal with certain foolery that you shouldn't. And that's why I say you need to live in an abundance mindset. Do not sit there and argue and negotiate with the woman that you are not married to. If she does not fit what you're looking for, leave her. And this guy, he actually listens to these spaces. I'm not saying that he listens to me. I, I'm not that big, right? 
but he listened to these spaces to say that he had a scarcity mindset when he decided to go ahead and marry this girl after she said that, hey, I don't want to just come out here to be somebody's girlfriend. He acknowledged the fact that he had scarcity mindset, took accountability, and he's explaining it to Kendra G. So this is what happens when you make decisions out of scarcity. So that's why I harp on that so much. Okay? Good on this brother for acknowledging that. Here we go. And, and really kind of desperate because of my age, I think uh, I proposed to her uh, that, later that year. And we got married a few months later. And so we really started like actually dating, dating in person when we got married and moved in together. So uh, <laughs> that was probably not the smartest idea. Uh, in hindsight, I would have not done that. But I learned a lot in that experience. She's a good person. And uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. So the good thing about his situation is they left amicably and he didn't have any kids with this young woman. So he's good to go. Okay, so you live and you learn. You made a decision out of scarcity. Move on. Here we go. Okay. All right. Well, we got to, that was a, I'm happy I asked for the backstory. I don't normally always ask, but I'm happy I did with you. So we right. got Hollis. Tennessee, 41 cool. is a Pisces system, systems administrator. Correct. No kids divorce March of this year. What kind of woman are you looking for? Okay, I'm, I'm looking for a woman who is feminine, uh, nurturing, family oriented, and intelligent. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are your deal breakers? Oof. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, okay, so he said, oh boy, because he knows that he's probably going to offend some women in the chat but nothing he said in my opinion was wrong you guys be the judge this is good here we go uh someone who's uh perpetually on social media um kind of weaves wigs long lashes lots of makeup no no that's not a shot at you kendra you look fantastic no, but listen, I, listen i'm not offended but i am everything you just said <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a shot, Kendra. You look great, especially. No, it's fine. I don't. I'm not. I'm not offended. Continue. Right. Uh, and I'm glad Kendra G is starting to do that. She's not offended about that. So yeah, she's starting to learn that most black men don't like all of that. But in Kendra's defense, she is a media personality, so I'm pretty sure she has to get done up. If she comes on screen without her makeup, then I'm pretty sure the women would cook Kendra G. If she understands that, she got to present a full face of makeup. So it is what it is. So glad that she's not offended. Um, smokers, um, tattoos, like full sleeve tattoos, neck tattoos, face tattoos, big chest tattoos. Um, I have this list here. Uh, don't be too overweight. You know, I'm not in the best shape myself, but like if you're 230, 5'1", like that's a, that's a little much for me. Um, and I'm looking. What if she's what? Oh, 230 pounds. Yeah, like 230 pounds, like five one. That's a, that's a lot. It's not really so much about the weight on the scale. It's more about uh, the shape. You know what I mean? If she's shaped right, but by proportion, right? So if I had to say like a type, I would prefer a girl who's like smaller on top and bigger on the bottom than really large on top and no bottom. Like that's okay. So we want a girl with cheeks. Kudos to you. A body type that I'm not really into that much but uh you know i'm just regular medium ugly so i'm not asking for a lot just now he's he described himself as medium ugly and if you guys remember on the community post i asked so y'all take that as a compliment most men said no so guys stop describing yourself as medium ugly because you know what that means when women say that they want a medium ugly guy they're basically saying i want a man that's only attractive to me based off of what he he does for me but if everybody sees him in public, they're going to they're gonna be like, man, why is that woman with this man? Because he doesn't look physically attractive. Because the narrative is that when women get to know you a little bit more, they'll, they will get more attractive to you, right? Is that fair to say? So women are looking for guys that may not necessarily be their type, but if they get to know the guy and they find out that he's a provider, he can do all these things for her, then they'll say, I want a medium ugly guy. And it's basically a guy that's not threatening out in public. Like women aren't going to try and shoot their shot at him because he's not conventionally attractive. So when you guys describe yourselves as medium ugly, it's basically an insult to yourself. Basically saying that you're unattractive, but you provide certain things which would allow a woman to uh, fall in love with you, right? 
So that's the only thing that I would say, stop saying that. Because that's not a compliment at all. And I told you guys about trying to get with women who say that you aren't their type. Because that's going to end bad. Because if their type does come around, then they may stray off. But they're trying to do something different by dating this man that's not, you know, conventionally attractive to them. And there's videos on TikTok where women will showcase, uh, see, I got me a nerd and he's showing me all the different Pokemons and things like that. The girlies the now now. Marrying a nerdy, a geeky man is where it's at. You want a soft girl life for the rest of your life? You know who to go for. I know when we were in high school, college, we 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 were attracted to you know to the to the quarterbacks or the baseball players or the soccer players or the the super popular guys or the bad boy vibes, but truly. The girls who who know know that the geekies and the nerdies are winning right now. They're so in and they never go out of style. In whatever century, whatever era, you can just peep that the nerdies and the geekies are where it's at. And they're so sweet and they cook for you. How sweet. It's not a compliment, guys. So my thing is there is women don't pick bad. They don't. They pick their type. And that's what it is. And then they'll say, well, I just, I'm just a bad picker of guys. No, you're not. You was attractive to that. You was attracted to that man and you chose to have sex with them and have kids. And now you're saying that I just pick bad. No, you picked your type. And don't fall into that trap of trying to save these women. Like, hey, let me show you something different. Let me show you that, you know, not being a pookie is where you should be. No. Good women already know that you guys are good men. You don't need a woman who has been through the ringer and now she's like, oh, yeah, now I want to get this nerd. I want to get this medium ugly guy. And y'all ass is leaning into it like this guy. You shouldn't. OK, it's a regular girl. You know what I'm saying? OK, yeah. um, that was if you have to look a certain way question, correct? No, I think no, that, that was, was just, oh, you started off. You got there in the what kind of woman are you looking for? OK, oh, okay. Now, no, that was for deal breakers. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of gave it, but the next question is what kind of woman are you look what well, should she look a certain way? Uh I'm open to any race. Um I'm not, you know, too picky on that. Uh like I said, I kind of gave a little details as to what I don't like. Other than that, just a regular like plain woman. Like I don't need any fine super, you know, Instagram model, I'm not looking for anything crazy, just a plain girl. That's it. Okay, and, and I don't know if you guys caught this, but he said he's open to any race. I was watching this on the live stream, and when he said that, every woman said he's looking for a white woman because he says he's open to any race. So when a black man says that they're willing to date whatever, then that automatically means that they want a white woman. And that's not what that means at all. He's just saying, hey, I'm looking for love. If she come in Hispanic, white, Asian, black, don't matter. They, that should be a good thing because, I mean, I hear black women say that all the time. So I didn't know that why that was an issue. But let's continue. Plain girl, that's it. Okay, what about um, money? Should she make a certain amount of money? Ooh, all right. <laughs> um, but the cousin. No, and this is a good, and I keep stopping it for a reason. Because I don't want you guys to miss these things. He listens to these spaces. Listen to what he says. This is good. Don't give me heat here. Because I'm old and they're going to say, oh, you're a sugar daddy and what have you. But I'm looking for a woman between the ages of 22 and 28, uh, hopefully childless. Um, How many times you heard black women get on Kendra G's show and say that they want a man that's 20 years older than them? They say it all the time. But for some odd reason, when a 40 year old, 41 year old black man says that I want a woman between 22 and 28, it's a problem. Mm. Hopefully, making less than fifty thousand a year. Woo! Okay. So this is good. Less than fifty thousand a year. Listen to his explanation. Well thought out. Shouts out to him. So you're forty one. You yeah. want a woman almost twenty years younger than you. That's correct. Okay. And you said between the ages of twenty two and what? Thirty. Yeah, about thirty. Thirty is fine. Yeah. Twenty two and thirty. Yeah. Twenty two and thirty, and no kids. 
No kids. Correct. And you don't want her to make more than 50,000. Correct. Is there a reason? Yes, there is a reason because um, it's really out of fairness. It's not a, a place of misogyny. Uh, me personally, I make around 90K. And let me stop right there. The brother makes 90K. Let me show you guys something real quick. You see top 20 and top 15% of uh, annual earners. So he lands between top 15 to top 20% of earners. I would put him about around 16 to 17%. But you know, uh, <laughs> you know what the comments were saying? One lady, she said that he doesn't make enough when he literally makes about the combined income of a black man and a black woman. Because the black women make uh, $44,000 on average each year in regards to 2022. And then black men make 50000 so he's right around there. So he literally makes about the same that a, a married black couple would make. But they said that he doesn't make enough to provide a woman a stay-at-home mom lifestyle. If I were to ask a woman to quit her career, potentially, and stay home to raise kids uh, for you know while they're uh, not school age, um, it's going to be very difficult to, for her to want to sacrifice a career that she went to school four to six years after high school, making a lot of money, it's not fair for me to ask her to quit that career. You know you know what I mean? So I'm looking for someone who, uh, I, I wouldn't ask someone to do something that I wouldn't do. Like if she would tell me to quit my career, I'm not quitting my career, you know, I, I worked hard, so. So yeah. you want a woman that doesn't have a career basically? Yes, I, I wouldn't mind if she were more entrepreneurial, maybe creative, maybe like a hairdresser or, uh, something that maybe she could do as a side hustle. Um, you know, I do programming and things of that nature. So I could help. I would help her build whatever business. So, yeah, I got no issue with that. But so, and like I said, I'm not going to take credit for anything that his brother said, but I have videos specifically saying that you need to get a, you know, either a woman with a career or, you know, the difference between a career and a job, right? So once, you know, women start to get older, they tend to have careers and they don't want to leave those careers. However, they want you to still pay all of the bills when they're working. I've mentioned that multiple times. Women will go to school for six to eight years, become, you know, doctors, lawyers, nurses. And then when they get, you know, get to 35 years old, it's like, OK, now I want a man to take care of me. But they still want to work and keep their money. What he's saying, I want a woman that had that just has a job which is easy to leave a career. You cannot just pick up and just be like, okay, I'm gonna just get rid of all this work and, you know, hard work that I did to earn this position in this firm or something like that. And he's like, no, I want a younger woman who has a job because it'll be easy for her to pick up and move with me to Tennessee. And at him making about 90 K in the Clarksville Nashville area, he's doing very well. He can absolutely support a wife. And if they have a kid, because if he, he said he's a government, uh, you know, government worker, he works in IT. So you get your step promotions every year or every other year. He can go up, you know, to GS, whatever, 12, 13. His, his job has an upward trajectory. So he's good. But for some odd reason, that wasn't enough. He says some things that are. That lets me know that he either listens to some of my videos are he listens to somebody that's saying the same thing because this was too spot on to what I've been telling you guys for a while now. Okay. Let's continue. But it's just that the older you get, the more things you acquire, for instance, like women in my tax bracket, which is not the highest or hundred K, you know, they live lives that are much more uh, extravagant than mine. You know, they go to brunch and spend a hundred dollars with their home girls, go on girls trips, Turks and Caicos, um, you know, stay in first class, you know, fly first class, stay in all inclusive resorts, like for them to quit that lifestyle and live on my 90 K budget, it, it's going to be too much. It's too much to ask a woman who's in my tax bracket or education area. So I just don't even expect it. I, I'm not going to ask them to make that sacrifice because nobody's going to sacrifice to be in a relationship with me. <laughs> it, 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 they're gonna want someone's gonna want to get their life upgraded you know what i mean not downgrade so 
So, and that's exactly what women be crying about on social media. What's that phrase they say, date within your wage? You should date if you are broke, but you have to date within your level. Like you have mm, to date within your God. tax bracket. People do not date in their tax bracket. That's exactly what he's describing. He said he don't want a woman who's doing that jet setter life, the travel leashes, that's running around here, you know, getting all in debt, flying first class, going to Turks and Caicos. He's dating within his wage, which makes sense. But they had a problem with that. Okay. You thought you really thought about this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. D said, Kendra, ask him, uh, what is the race of his ex-wife? So the reason why she asked that is because he said he's open to all races and he's well-spoken. So she asked him what was the race because she was assuming that his ex-wife was white. <laughs> she was a black woman, natural black woman, like natural hair, not a lot of makeup, basically what I described. So he's already, he's already shown that he can acquire a woman who's in that age range who meets all his requirements. But they were like, ain't no woman going to settle down with this man. No, a young woman that met all his requirements married him. Didn't work out, but he already has proven that he can get that type of woman. And no, his wife was not white. She was black. <laughs> Lord. Okay. Um, so now it's time for the Kendra cam. All right. Hold on. Oh. Okay. Yeah. You seem taller than I thought. Oh, I'm not tall. I'm a short king. I'm 5'8". I say he's a Okay, so we're about the same height. But one thing that he can work on is to get in that gym. But he did acknowledge that. He said that, hey, I could be in a little better shape. Yeah, man, you you ain't got no kids. You in IT, you make a 90K. Put some of that money towards the gym membership and get in shape. That will help you out as well. But that's just nitpicking. The dude is doing what he needs to do. He's not overweight. He's not obese. So whatever I'm saying is just going to add to his attractiveness to women. So get in shape for yourselves, and then you'll start to see how things may open up a little bit more. Okay, let's continue. Sure, King. He's sure, King. Five days is a good time. A good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hollis, do you want the woman to be in Tennessee? No, she could be anywhere. Anywhere you you'll relocate? No, I'm not relocating. No, but I'm willing to long distance date until she decides to move here. I'm assuming you want that age range because you want kids. Correct. Okay. Now, um, you don't have to answer. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm going to ask, when's the last time you was intimate with someone? I prefer not to answer that. Okay, I skipped over the first question. When was your last relationship? Uh, my marriage. That, that was in March. That's when right in March. Was. Okay. Right. Um, three flaws you have to work on. Uh, three flaws. Well, fitness, I could lift more. You know, you that's go. something that I could definitely work on. Uh, eat more healthily because I do cook very often, a decent cook, but uh, I definitely could uh, improve in that department. Um, I think my views are a little uh, conservative, and I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily consider that a flaw, but I think that a lot of uh, women would not necessarily like that. Not as far as like conservative as is what a woman can and can't do, uh, just, you know, uh, I'm just a little bit traditional in some ways. So there's that. And a third. So, and there's nothing wrong with being conservative, brother. You know what I'm saying? This is 2024. You can have your own views. It is what it is. But we know how the black community views black men who are conservative and may be voting a different way outside of Kamala Harris. So yeah, stand on business. Say that, hey, I'm a conservative. Conservative is it. It is what it is. You can feel a type of way, don't matter. That means I'm not the person for you. So let's continue. Flaw is I could be a little bit of a know-it-all sometimes. Sometimes when I think I know what I'm talking about, uh, I, I could be a little dismissive when people are bringing kind of anecdotal experiences. You, you hear that? Man, come on, man. You know that this dude listened to these spaces. He said he gets pissed off when people have anecdotal experiences. That's exactly what we talk about in these spaces. So, <laughs> so he's doing a good job of reciting all the points, but he's not saying that, hey, man, you know, I listen to such and such, but you can kind of tell 
based off the way that he's talking. That's pretty good. When they're bringing up kind of points of views that are maybe technically correct, but it's like it, 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 it kind of it's, it's like someone's being a contrarian. Like if I were to say like, hey, I would prefer to deal with someone who's in their 20s because there's typically the more fertile years and someone responds with, I know a woman who had a baby at 50. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> Make that statement generally not true. You know what I mean? And technically that person's right. Is, is it possible? Yes. But I, I feel like it's a little contrarian. I could be a little bit dismissive of those points of view. So there's that. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Now, why would a woman be lucky to be with you? Uh, a woman would be lucky to be with me because I'm um, very loving, caring, um, I'm very responsible, uh, I'm good with my money, I'm generous with my money, uh, I give her gifts and make sure you know, take care of all the her necessities, you know, her insurance or uh, car or, you know, food in the house, basically the things that a woman needs. And I would be a great father because uh, my parents would uh, are together still. Um, they've been married for 40 years. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's yeah, 40 years this year. So they'll be having a pretty big anniversary this year. So they provided me a great example for the most part. So, so I don't understand. He grew up in a two parent household. He said he will provide the necessities. We discuss this, right? Needs versus wants. We discuss all these things on this channel, man. And it's good to see that this brother is kind of the example of that. He grew up in a two-parent household, parents still married, going on 40 years now. So he knows what a husband is supposed to be, knows what a wife is supposed to be. He said that he would, you know, take care of the, the needs, the necessities. He would give the woman gifts, you know what I'm saying? And uh, provide a life where she could be a stay-at-home mom. What is the problem? <laughs> I mean, Jesus, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Couple things. Okay. Um, could the woman have kids already? <sighs> one potential. Now, and that's one thing that I hate when guys do that. And I also don't like it when women do that as well, who don't have children. If you don't want a woman with kids, say you don't want a woman with kids. You don't have them. Okay. Don't, you know, potentially depending on the situation. Right. If I was on the dating market, it'd be a little bit different. I have a buckaroo, a 21 year old buckaroo. <laughs> so it's different for me. So if I say, yeah, you know, she got one kid. That's cool. It's different. But for you men and women that don't have kids, stand on it and be like, nah, man, I just want a woman who don't have children. That's perfectly fine. It's depending on the situation. OK, well, you mm -hmm. just say a young age. So are you potentially could meet somebody around mm -hmm. the age for no kids? We have mm -hmm. a couple of paid questions. You ready for them? I'm ready for them. P said, what do you consider financial abuse in a relationship and do you do it? So the reason why this woman, she asked this question, you know, about financial abuse. She's basically thinking that the reason why he wants a woman who makes less than her is, the, you know, because he wants to financially abuse her. These women are, are incorrigible, bro. Uh, it's... But he answered it right. Uh, what I would consider financial abuse is purposely withholding money in order for a spouse to not be able to uh, get access to certain needs that they have or to be able to reach out to people. Like, let's say she want to fly home to see her family. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because I don't want you to go. And I'm not going to give you the money to go. So I, I think that is a good example of financial abuse. And no, I absolutely do not do that. I would okay. not isolate anyone. Mm -hmm. So and this in the black community amongst black women, it, it's kind of a it's it's a it's a contradictory type of argument, because on one end, you'll hear black women say, I want my man to make more than me. Right. So when a man does make more than her or she doesn't have to work, then the first thing that they go to is like, yeah, he just wants to control me with his money. Because if I don't have my own, then it's going to be financial abuse. But if the man makes less than her, then she's like, well, I can't respect him. I'm not going to submit to a man who makes less than me. 
So that's why it's a huge contradiction because you have a man who specifically said he wants a woman to make less than him so he can be in a position to take care of her. And also she can branch out into entrepreneurship to contribute to the household or whatever her interests are. But that seems like a red flag because this woman asked, does he, uh, you know, practice financial abuse? It's crazy. It's <laughs> Lord. And that's and this is one of the points where I said I kind of lost all hope because I don't know where black men can fit in with the majority of the single black women. It's like you, you can't, you know, win for losing. OK, Chance the chief said women crying because he wants someone that makes less than him. But don't 98.9% .9 of women who come on here claim they want a man that makes equal or more. I mean, there you go. Right. Did. You know, I'm, I'm just listening to women. This is what women say they want. They say that they want a man that's doing better than them. And a response might be like, okay, just make more money then. It's, <laughs> I, I work in a government job, so I do get increases every year, but it's not, uh, what do you call it? Like huge increases. I would have to quit my job and move to a new job to get a big increase in pay. And so I'm hoping that if I'm working with a woman, uh, we could build something together that she could have owned for herself and it could contribute to the family financially and it would increase all our money. So I'll take care of all the basics. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think 90 G's is that bad, you know. <laughs> it's not bad, man. And like I said, the comments were saying that he don't make enough. Do black women understand that y'all only make $44,000 on average a year? And y'all have the nerve to tell this man making $90,000 that it's not enough with no children. And y'all use it most. 61% of black women have children. So start doing the numbers. And y'all going to see more of them in a second. So, if the you know, the average black woman makes $44,000 and the majority of y'all have kids. This brother ain't got no kids and he make $90,000. And you got the nerve to turn your nose up to him? He should be vetting y'all a little bit more stringent. <laughs> it's not great, but, you know, there's single mothers with three and four kids that are doing it, making half what I make. I mean, they might have some government assistance, but they're managing. So if they can do it, why can't we? So, yeah. And there you have it. Okay, okay. In some of my videos, I'm like, man, I'm going to hold out hope. I'm going to hold out hope. But this pissed me off to the point that I was like, man, yeah, I was talking to my homeboy. I was like, hey, man, I think it may be done. You know, and I may start encouraging black women or black men more to either get on this passport bro thing or what's the other one? Um, SYSBM. Uh, yeah, they may have to start taking that up even more because after this interview, this dude checked all the boxes. And it's like, nah, we don't want that. But then the other video, they're like, yeah, I want these uh these hood dudes. So hey, he may have to try and get with those brothers that speak about passport bro, SYSBM, because it may be done for the black community. Oh.